Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at joanne.com. We're about to head into the studio now. While I'm already here, I'm just going to turn around and buckle in and let's get started. We have a pre-week this week and this week we're going to get ourselves set up so that we know everything that we need to know in order to really start this stitch along. So let me tell you why this happened and then tell you what really the goal is for this stitch along. The first thing you're going to notice is that the coloring of this afghan is amazing. It's very bold. So it's a nod to floral blossoms. So Aaron Black, the designer for this particular one, really wanted us to think spring, think blooms, think, you know, the first flowers popping out of the ground. So that's what these colors are coming into play. So we really wanted to experiment with something else, which was really quite passionate for Aaron, but has a lot of benefits for you as a crocheter. So you're going to notice right off the hop that this blanket has several different panels that are being put together. Now don't let that make you afraid because the fact is is that they puzzle together so well that it is crazy on how well they go. I was thinking to myself it's gonna buckle, it's gonna buckle and I'm gonna have to force it down and stuff and it really didn't and I was so shocked and I was really quite pleased because I'm like oh I don't have to fake it for a camera, it's awesome. But the trick is, is watching the gauge of the pattern. So the gauge is the measurement that a designer's tension has that they're relaying to you, the crocheter at home, so that you can exactly get the model that is in the sample itself. So each one of us has a different way that we hold the hook, we uh, give the yarn to our hands, and a different tension. So in essence that if you didn't really pay attention to gauge you could literally have a blanket that is completely a different size it could be a foot off in one direction or another and then the pieces cannot work together as well so what we have to do is that we have to think about gauge in this particular one and then honor that so you're going to notice that this pattern uses a J hook at six millimeter but and that is suggested throughout the whole thing because that's what it took to get this project to come together for the designer. But what we need to do at home is that we need to do a gauge check. So this whole video is about learning how to gauge and actually doing three gauge swatches in order for you to do it. Now, you don't have to waste your yarn when you're making a gauge in order to keep the concept. So that's really quite fun. The one gauge that we are going to do, we are going to waste our yarn to make that, but it is so critical that you do it because if it doesn't work out for the gauge, then you know it's not gonna work out on your blanket. So it's important that we do do that one. The other ones that you can just rip out. So I'm gonna be giving you some tips in order to get to the gauge on how it's worked and why it's important. Now, one of the lessons that uh, Aaron wanted to really convey is that when people do hats, for example, like they put on a hat and it's way too big or it's way too small, the first question out of somebody's mouth that I would come back to, because people email me that kind of stuff all the time, what was your gauge? And they're like, gauge? And some people, I swear to God, they just say, oh yeah, I did it. We know your games. So we want to really convey the idea that, especially when things are being puzzled together, like a sweater or any other kind of ideas, that the gauge is really quite honored because it is really truly important. So you're going to notice that there was a six millimeter size J crochet hook, but when I did mine, there was two different sizes of hooks because when I did the one gauge swatch, I needed to increase my hook size in order to get to the gauge that it was suggested. So different stitches act different ways in our hands and it's really up to our mood swings as well, to be quite honest with you. So I want you to grab a cup of coffee. Well, unless that hikes you up. Uh, get like get in the Zen moment Ooh, and just relax. And what we're going to do is that we're gonna start doing the gauge. So I'm gonna do the easier gauges first and then we're gonna get into the complicated one. Now, everything that you're about to learn in the complicated one is actually coming out in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's awesome. So one thing I will tell you is that when I did the actual gauge one that's more complicated, I actually screwed it up when I did it on the sample itself and I frogged it out and I did one whole line like that. But when I did it the second time, it was like perfect. So it's one of those ones where you're like, oh, and you keep looking at the instructions and the tension was all over the place. But once I actually ripped it out and retried that row, it was like perfect, like perfect. So one thing I would like you to be able to just think about is that Sometimes frog and we all look at it as like, oh, I've got a frog. And then you got to bang it out on Facebook that you're frogging and that your life is over. 
<laughs> but the truth is, is that when you frog and you try it the second time, chances are it's going to look better than it was the first time. So that's just something that you should keep in mind. So enough uh, jibber jabber. Let's get out of it. Let's head on into the studio right there. And we're going to start working on the gauge and we're going to go through the introduction of this project right now. So welcome to the pre-week. This is number one and what we decided to do is to give you all the information so that you can do all the gauge checking. There's a total of three gauges that we need to do and so we're gonna do a double crochet gauge today. We're going to do a single crochet gauge and we're also gonna do this fancy gauge that you have here. So this is actually a really neat idea. You can see it's just rough and this one you're going to want to change the colors uh, in order to do it and in order to do that you'll have to trim your yarn. So this, remember I said that you're gonna have a little bit of yarn waste with the one, this is the one. I would strongly recommend it because you can get your hand uh, hands on this particular concept in order to uh, learn how it works and so when you actually come to this part of the sample which you'll see right in the very middle here you're going to be more familiar with how the stitch is done. So it's actually to your benefit to do this gauge. So when we go to look at this pattern here we are noticing that the blanket is 50 inches by 58 so it's nice and generous and it says that it's using a six millimeter size J crochet hook or the size uh, needed to obtain the gauge. I told you already in the intro of this is that I actually used two sizes of hooks. So I used a six and a half millimeter size K and also a six millimeter size J because when I did the gauge checking they were all not the same. And when I actually did this in the very end and put everything together it puzzled together so perfectly and that's because the gauge was working. So I was getting a little bit kind of antsy but really I didn't need to be. So let's flip the page. So as you go into page number two, Aaron has more detail on how to block and so blocking means that when you are finished a project, so this is not blocked. So when you finish the project you kind of dampen it a bit and then you lay it down. You can pin it down to some foam if you have to get it to a certain size and then put a damp cloth over it and then just let it dry, uh, like leave it there for a little while and then take the damp cloth off and then let it air dry and then it forms a new shape. So you'll notice in the tutorial series is that when we're going to block this thing it's gonna be really quite a amazing in order for it to happen and so all the instructions are there for that. So our first gauge is appearing right here is a single crochet gauge and so we're going to be paying attention to that and let's flip the page to the next one. Now the next gauge here is on page number three and there's a lot of instruction for that because we're trying to achieve this shaping that we have here. So what we've done for you is that here is the gauge swatch that we need to get to in order to have it. So I told you that when we're going to do this you'll notice that this is the center block of the whole thing. So if you do a gauge you're going to be more comfortable and actually I think more consistent with your stitches if you do this gauge. And so we're going to be working through this. So I'm gonna leave that to the end of today's tutorial and then we're gonna continue to flip into the last page and look you're getting a preview already of the the granny squares that are in this thing. So if you would like to think about that, that's something but the color breakdown has not been provided to you. So this is going to happen on week number two. So you can get an idea uh, if you know how to follow diagrams for this but what we have to do for this one is that we have to do a double crochet gauge in order to uh, make sure that this is gonna work. So all we just need to do is double crochet that gauge first and then once you have that done then you can simply do one of these and that's just something that we're gonna get ourselves involved with today. So let's do the easy gauging first and let's begin to start our journey. So we're gonna start with our first gauge. It's on page number three and this is a double crochet stitch gauge. So what we want to do is that we wanna chain 16 and then fourth chain from the hook we're going to uh, just do a double crochet and we're gonna double crochet back and forth to the it's approximately square. And then once we get that done we're gonna take our measurements. I'm gonna show you how that's done and then you're going to be able to determine how that's gonna be able to work. So for myself when I did this particular example here is that the six millimeter actually matched but when I did the other one which is this one here I had to increase my hook which I'll get to. So I'm going to start off with the six millimeter as it suggests. See where it goes and then we're gonna talk about adjusting the size once we get there. So let's grab some Karen one pound yarn and let's get started and try a gauge. Let's begin a double crochet stitch gauge with the already on the hook with our slip knot. We're going to chain a total of 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. 
Once you have this done, then you're going to go four chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one, two, three, and four. Turn it around and, and double crochet into the back chain. And once you do the back chain of the one, they should all stay turned over. The chain, the chain should stay turned over. So then double crochet in each of the back hump of the chain all the way to the other side. I'll see you back there in just a moment. So I've now double crocheted all the way across. So turn your work. So I want you to do the remaining of the rows until the um, panel looks square. So chain three which counts as your first double crochet and then starting in the next one I want you to double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end. When you get to the end turn your work, chain three to uh, count uh, to start again and then just keep double crocheting back and forth until you get to a square formation. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna fast forward to this panel right here. So I'm just gonna say I'm done because I've already done it and I'm gonna show you how to measure just to check your gauge and I'll be right back in just a moment. So to check our gauge it is 11 double crochets by six and a half rows equals four inches or ten centimeters depending on your unit of measure. So what we need to do is that we need to get a tape measure in order to measure it out. Okay, so we're looking for the four inch mark. We're looking for it on the, on the, the horizontal and the vertical to test it and to count the amount of rows and double crochets. Let's do that on the actual sample. So what we have to do is lay out your tape measure or ruler and we need to lay it out so we can see four inches in the panel. So we're going to count from the one here and we're gonna count and see how many we can go. So we're gonna say one and, and our goal is 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 and 11. Do you notice that the fourth is like halfway through this one? So here is my gauge from here to here. So it's 11. So I'm gonna keep that as being consistent. So let's go through some scenarios. If my 11 was ending up here and I still had all this, this means that I would be too tight. So in order to expand this out to get it to go out further, you would have to increase your hook size. So bump it up to maybe a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook. Now if your 11 is way over here, you're going to have to decrease your hook in order to get it to go smaller. So maybe start bumping it down to a five and a half millimeter size I, maybe even a five millimeter size H. But right now you can see that I'm really close to the point that it's, I'm not even gonna dispute it, right? So it's that close. So once we can determine this, right, we're gonna know that the, the height is actually gonna be pretty close. So what we're going to do is just turn the work and we're gonna count the number of rows it takes to get to four inches. And remember it said uh, six and a half. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. So I'm pretty close. So this gauging for this first one of the double crochet for me works. So remember if you need to get this bigger you need to increase your hook size and if it needs to come smaller as your stitches are too loose you need to decrease your hook size. We're now going to do the single crochet swatch. Now the single crochet swatch and that special stitch that we're gonna do in the future belong together. Here's my thinking for you. I would do the single crochet first because chances are this gauge is going to match the other one. That at least happened to me and I talked to the designer and the same thing happened. So if your swatch here for the single crochet is not correct, you can redo this one instead of doing all the work for this one here and then realizing it's wrong, you can pretty much find it out when you're doing here. So I would do this one first. So this one here is chaining 15, uh, one single crochet, second chain from the hook and we're gonna continue and you work it until it's approximately square and then we're gonna take our measurements like we did before and the gauge as you see is 11 single crochets and 13 rows. So I am going to start off with the hook size that I ended up with because that's just, because I know what it is. So even though it's a six millimeter size J, when I did it, it was too small. So what I want, what I did is that I increased my hook to a six and a half millimeter size K and I was able to hit the gauge. So this here has been done with the larger hook. That's not suggested but remember it said in the instruction change the hook size to match the gauge and that's what we did. So let's uh, begin to do a swatch for this one single crochet. So let's do the single crochet swatch. Sorry my hook is stained and we're going to start off with chaining 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
14 and 15. I tend to be tighter with my single crochet so that's why I think my hook ha size has to go bigger. So I'm gonna go second chain from the hook and turn it to the back hump and you're gonna do a single crochet along the back hump of the chain all the way across and I'll see you on the other side in just a moment. So I just came all the way across. I'm gonna turn. Notice how that large chain just really condensed. I told you I'm kind of tight with my single crochet. So chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches going across. Turn your work, chain one and single crochet across and you're gonna do this to approximately it looks square and then um, we're going to do a gauge check. So I already have my sample done so I'm just going to bring that forward and then I'm gonna show you how to measure that one. So just pretend this is that and we're gonna move on to that next. So like before lay down your tape measure and you're measuring four inches. So the goal is is to hit 11 single crochets. So when I did it with the six millimeter size J as it suggested I was way too short. So I increased my hook size to a six millimeter size uh, six and a half millimeter size K. So you're gonna count the number of stitches between the four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And you see the twelfth one and is at about a halfway spot. So eleven certainly fits for here. So this is good enough for me to go. So if this was way too long, so for example your uh, um, 11 was way over here, you need to decrease your hook size to make it smaller and if your 11 is like here somewhere you're going to have to increase your hook in order to get it to go bigger. So remember to if your gauge is too big you need to go smaller hook and if the gauge is too small you need to increase your hook but in this case it seems to be perfect. To do the height it's exactly the same as we did before so just turn it sideways. And so it's now in groups of two. I can see this here. You may not be able to see it at home but it's in lines of two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There's the thirteenth and that means it is confirmed to be 13 rows. Again if this is way too big you need to decrease your hook and if it's too small it ended up too early then that means that you need to increase your hook size. So this is that. So once you know this one here so I knew that it was a six and a half millimeter size um, K hook. This means that the next swatch that I'm about to do I would start it with this gauge hook that you decided for this one in order to start that next fancy one and chances are it will work out and be the same hook. So might as well start with what you know and then if there's a problem then you can de your, uh, decrease your hook if you have to for that fancier stitch just in case you have to. Let's move on to that fancy one which is the flower puff stitch. So I know the sample isn't pretty but I don't wanna um, just clean this up just for your benefit because this is not something I would do. So I wanna keep it just like it is rough hand because this is just basically a tester to make sure that we understand the stitches so that we can get our gauge to be right. The gauge is 14 double crochets across by seven uh, rows equals four inches. So what we have to do is if we follow the gauging that um, Aaron has set out for us we're going to notice is that when you finish the sample and the sample is exactly what you see in this diagram. This should take you directly to the correct gauge. So here's the diagram of what we want to achieve and we're going to just repeat this over and over in order to get it. So when this is all said and done this gauge swatch should be pretty close to what the gauge should be here. So we're going to follow this set of instructions but on the real sample all this is is it's wider and we're gonna give you that information when we hit into week number one because we're gonna be starting off with this. So if you do the gauge now you're gonna be familiar with the stitch work that you'll have to do in week number one. We're gonna start with our first color. Aaron does suggest and I do suggest it as well. Change your colors where it says to change your colors so that you get comfortable with that process as well. So you could technically do it on one color but um, you'll be able to see it a lot better if you change your colors. You're gonna once it's on the hook you're going to chain 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. So once we have the 17 we're gonna just go back to the diagram and let's review where we are. So we're gonna start with row number one and in row number one we're gonna go second chain from the hook and we're gonna put two single crochets in a row and then we're gonna skip two stitches and in this third one we're gonna put all of this in here. This is a puff stitch and we're going to be putting that in and then we're gonna be skipping two after it and then two single crochets in a row, skipping two and do that again, skipping two and put two into the final. So let's do that and this is going to be row number one. So let's go second chain from the hook to get the back hump and do the first two as single crochets. So one and two. You'll notice that this will significantly condense down too if you think this is too long. 
So now you wanna skip two and go to the third and do a puff stitch. It's like, it looks like a shell. So just going in, pull through and then yarn over and then in again, pull through and do you see that there's five loops on the hook? Pull through all five loops to finish. Then chain one tightly to lock that puff stitch into position. Now do that three more times. So wrap and into the same one, pull through, wrap and it's the same one, pull through and then pull through everything and then chain one to lock. And again, now this takes a bit of practice. This is why this gauge is, is uh, beneficial for you. Okay, and chain one to lock and then again, and chain one to lock. Now, on the chain here, you're going to want to skip two chains and go to the third chain for two single crochets in a row. And then you're gonna wanna do that again. So skipping two, go to the third and do your puff. You will get quicker at the puff. I filmed the original a few weeks ago so I'm a little more slower than I normally be, would be but that's to your benefit because I'm filming. <laughs> but once I got working on this thing I could just uh, I bang it out really quick quickly. I was actually surprised on how fast it, it was able to crochet together. Actually the whole project to be honest with you. Okay so once you get that four in so you can see four groups so one, two, three, four, chain one to lock and then skip the next one and just, sorry, skip the next two and then just single crochet in the last two. And this is where you're gonna wanna change your color at this point. So the last section is here, just pull up a loop. We don't wanna get rid of it. So this color of these particular ones are always gonna be carried up on the one side and the other color that we see is going to always be started and then stopped every time and so we'll have to weave in those ends each and every time. We're going to want to start here. So we're not starting where we finish. We're gonna start here. Let's go back to the diagram. So Aaron did us a big favor by marking the first double crochet that's red. It says standing double crochet. So this is gonna be our start. So there's no chains to start anything. We're gonna do that. And so we're gonna start right here and this is where we've ended. And so we're going to do this whole row and finish it. But this one that we just pulled the loop is going to be the slip stitch to start up here. And we're gonna go there and then back. And then once we get that done, the standing double crochet is on this side and we're gonna work ourselves backward like that. Let's begin row number two. So let's begin row number two. So using a different color, you're going to come into the um, first one here. So we wanna do a standing double crochet. So pinch it first and wrap so it doesn't unspin itself and insert into the first single crochet. So look where I am, okay. And you're going to pull through and then pull through two and then two. And this makes the first stitch look perfect. Okay, and you're gonna wanna weave in these ends later that we will cover in week number one. So the next one is going to be one double crochet. So that's in the single crochet there. And now we're gonna start the fun part. So there's four of these cluster, or sorry, four of these puff stitches here are here. There's technically only three gapping spaces. So they got one and then two and then three. So each one of those gapping spaces are going to have two uh, double crochets in each. So remember that when you're on the tops of these, there's only ever three of these spaces, or sorry, three of these sets of double crochet. Okay. And once those three sets are in, you're gonna come immediately to the single crochet and plop in some double crochets there. So one into each and then start the next one of doing the same thing. The only difference on the real sample is that this is gonna be a wider section to work with. So going after the first puff, so after the first puff into that space, you're gonna put two double crochet and into the next space, two double crochet and it is a space, it's not in that chain one that you locked it just to be clear. And then finally as we're coming to the end, you have two single crochets. So you're gonna go into both of them 
for a double crochet including that one that you pulled up the loop on. So just be careful you don't undo that. And now technically this color is done. So we are going to fasten off. I'm going to show you in week number one um, how to fasten in the ends. But at this point I'm just gonna lock it and we're going to start row number three and four and we're just gonna pick up this color before we get started. And I wanna pull up a loop that's long enough that it can lock into with a slip stitch into the first double crochet like that. And then we're gonna begin row number three. So row number three and four is going to be this formation that you have here. So we're gonna work on the underside of the, of the puff flower or puff daisy first and then we're gonna work on the overside and then end it pull up a large loop. So you see these slip stitches on this side that's the, um, the loop coming back into play. So you can see that each and every time. Let's do three and four. I'm not gonna refer back to the diagram and number four but just take a quick look and then you always have access to it as well. Let's begin three and four. Let's begin. We're going to chain three. That'll be a first double crochet. That will count as that. And then we're gonna start this um, the clusters that we're about to do. So you're gonna come in to the space after these two double crochets are, are in. Okay, it's before you start here. That's before you start. And therefore the first cluster, part of the cluster is gonna go there. So you're gonna wrap and insert into the space, pull through and do that wrap and into the space and pull through and you're going to leave that on your hook. So now you're gonna come into the very next space after it and do the same thing. So wrap and in, pull through and then wrap and in, pull through. So you have a lot of loops on your hook, right? So once you have all that done, you got your two in there, you're going to pull through all of that section and then chain one to tightly lock it. That chain one in the future is going to be the center point of the flower coming up. Once you've got that done, chain two and then keep moving on. So in the two middle double crochets of that, you're going to put one single crochet into each of those double crochets to find the middle point balance. And now this time there's going to be a, a set of four. So this is only two. We're gonna do fours. So we're gonna chain two before we begin and then coming into the spacing so right here as we're continuing along, so it's just after the single. So right here, right here, right here, and right here. So let's begin. So we're just gonna wrap and in, pull through, and wrap and in, pull through. Leave it on the hook. Come to the next one. So you wanna do four in a row exactly the same way. There's gonna be a lot of loops so the ergonomic hooks may be a, a bit of maybe a bit of a challenge, but it's not a, a deal breaker. I just squeeze more loops on there. So once you have all four in there, you can see one, two, three, four. You're going to carefully just wrap and pull through everything. So if you're too tight, your your gauge will be a little bit too small. And if you're just right, you should be able just to squeeze it all through there. Chain one to lock it, and then after that, chain two to move on and then coming it to the top of the next one. A circle, do you see that? You're going to single crochet the two in a row and then begin a half circle once again. So chain two before you start and come to the space just after the single crochet and start your puff. Okay, and you want to continue that and do the next space after it. And then pull through everything chain one to lock and just keep in mind that after you get that done you are going to double crochet into the last stitch that's available to you. And therefore it looks like that. So now you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number four. So row number four is exactly how we did it already here. The difference is is that we have to keep in mind that if the pattern keeps shifting back and forth. So we're going to begin chain three which is a double crochet. So now that the double crochet is in, the middle of the flower here is exactly. Now because it's an end, it's only a partial flower so the top part of this only should be partial. So you're gonna start with a puff first. 
and don't forget to tightly lock it and then do it one more time. So you can tell that the tops of the flowers are easier to do. Chain one to lock. Once you have that locking, see these two single crochets? Just match it with two single crochets again. Now the middle of the flower is there. So this time you see it's a full flower underneath. So it's gonna be full on top. So there will be four puff stitches in a row. Do not forget to lock it. And then after the four are in, chain one to lock it to finish and then single crochet in the next two single crochets. And then eventually you come to the end and then just start and there's only two puffs because it's an end piece. And the trick is, is that you gotta make sure that after you lock that final one, you're going to double crochet in the double crochet that's available to you. And you're going to pull up a loop because we're going to introduce this and when we turn our work, we're going to turn it because the side that the loop is on this time is the side that we're about to start on with the other color. And let's go back to the diagram. So here we are is that here's the other side. So we're going to start with a standing double crochet here. This is so we've gone across and then back and this is where we pulled up a loop that we'll be using in the future but the standing double crochet is on this side and we're gonna follow exactly the same path just like we did before. We're just starting at a different spot. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. So this is row number five. So row number five you're just gonna start with the standing double crochet. So just get that ready. Just move that loop out of the way so that you're getting the top of that stitch and wrap the hook and going in. Noticing that I am pinching that first loop so it prevents it from spinning. There you go. So there's the first one that is in and now in the same one that you did that attaching to, you wanna double crochet one more time. So in the beginning and the end of this row, the, the standing double crochet is and the double crochet so in the beginning of and ending of this row, there's two double crochets that are in the same stitch. Just keep that in mind. Now to start this one here, the puff stitches are right here. You're gonna come into the first space between the two puffs and put in your two double crochet. And then you're going to double crochet the two singles that are in between the flowers. Now like before, you're going over top of a flower so you're gonna go into the space after the first puff and put in two. And then you'll do each space after that. So remember on the tops of these when you're doing this, there's only three groups of the double crochet. And once you see the three in there, you're immediately gonna come to the single crochets and put in one double crochet each. Okay, so we're gonna come to this one. So you're gonna go after the first puff into this space. In this case there's no more stitches left other than the turning chain and you'll put in two double crochets into the last chain. And this color is technically done again. So we're going to just trim it off. We'll weave it in later which I'll show you in week number one and then we'll begin then row number six. So row number six when we go to start is see the loop here. We're gonna put this back on, tighten things back up, get it to the same height as the other one and lock it with the slip stitch and then we're gonna begin row number six. So in row number six we're gonna start off with single crochets this time. So two in a row and it's very similar to how we did it here but this is the top layer. So this is number seven. So when we come across we're gonna put two and then we're going to start and then do the mass of flowers. So that each one of these ones here will be a full flower instead of partials like we had before. So let's do row number six and then seven we're going to bang our way back across the top. Let's do six and seven. Let's begin row number six. You're gonna chain up one and in the one that you did the slip stitch with the first two are single crochets in a row. 
this here that you're climbing up you will be able, you're covering that in the future. So when you go to uh, finish off the major block that's in the center of this whole blanket um, you'll be able to that'll all be hidden. So don't worry about that so much just in case you were. So now we're gonna start with the full under flower. So just chain two to begin and you're gonna start with the space just after the single crochets that are in. So right there and you'll begin to do this. So you're putting in your puff stitch and then grab the first one and then you gotta do the next. So there's gonna be a lot. So then come in here. Remember everything is in groups of two if it makes it easier for you to know that. And then we come into the space just before the center point. See this will be the center point of the flower. So we're in the space so you've got all four. So one, two, three, four and then just wiggle your yarn all the way through there. Again if you're too tight it will be harder. So this is a great practice opportunity. So pull through and then chain two to move on and then single crochet in the top middle. Just remember to always chain two before you start an under flower. So chain two and then start with the space just after the single crochet and then grab four spaces in a row. So in my head I'm just saying I just grab two, I just grab three and I just grab four. Okay and then pull through everything. Lock it and chain one or sorry chain two to move on and in the very last one there is two double crochets here. So you're gonna come into the, the two last with some singles and then you're gonna turn your work and do row number seven. So in row number seven we're gonna do the top sides of these flowers. So just chain one and you're gonna do a single crochet in each of the first two. So in the top here right in this piece you're gonna put four puff stitches in a row. Make sure that you do close them after each one and with a chain one. So one, two, When I originally saw this blanket I thought it was a Catherine wheel stitch. So I have never done this stitch before. I was like so excited to learn something new. Okay so I have my four. So the two singles in the middle keep them as singles. And now do a top side flower again. The nice thing about learning this procedure now as I, I think I've told you like probably a gazillion times already. I just think it's such a great opportunity that when you see week number one and you've already done it, it won't be so scary. And you'll have some practice. So chain one to lock that last one and then two singles in the last. So now that you've gone all the way there and back, pull up a loop and let's take a look on where we need to be because you'll notice is that the, even though we finished here, the next orange is gonna start on the opposite side just like it did down here. So let's begin to do that next. This is going to move on and we're going to start the repeat pattern which is doing rows number two and three once again. So just like down here this is row two and three just like it is here. So we're gonna start with a standing double crochet here and then we're gonna go across with this color and then pick up this and then we're gonna just do one over and then we're gonna take our measuring tape to be able to look at where we are in this pattern. So in row number two, so I bet you're thinking to yourself how are you gonna remember what side that you're starting this color on? In week number one I'm gonna have some extra bonus tips for you with that because I actually came up with a method that's so awesome. <laughs> I honestly I was getting confused and I actually had to redo the middle twice. Well just once. I consider it the twice. <laughs> it was like oh my god. So anyway I'm not gonna get too much into that but I'm gonna show you tips on knowing which side to start on in week number one. So we're gonna just start with the first one. So it's remember it's a standing double crochet. Now I'm getting excited. <laughs> if I start sweating here on camera you know why. So we're gonna start with a standing double and we're gonna do a double crochet in the next. Okay so we got the top side of the flower. See I feel like the fear is now gone and I'm starting to get all giddy. So I better smarten up. <laughs> so what we're gonna do after the first puff you're going to slam in two double crochets. Slam in. I don't, I started that saying last year. I don't know why. It's something I would say to myself at home. So you're putting in your two double crochets into each space at home or at, <laughs> on your project sorry. Aaron's gonna make me re-edit this thing. 
hopefully not. So uh, she's really awesome. So wink wink nudge nudge. So once we get those spaces filled in the two single crochets in a row in the middle will be double crochets. And uh, we're gonna go across and so you have your next group it go after the first puff and you're putting two double crochets into that. So changing up the yarn colors actually made a lot of sense uh, for this particular sample in order to do the gauge swatch. I originally thought I was just gonna just you know tell you to just to use one color but honestly you get used to the color changing in the end which is a good moment to have and Aaron suggested it too so I was a good boy and did what I was told. <laughs> okay so last two stitches double crochet. Uh, Aaron designed the last stitch along uh, for Joanne as well last spring. You remember that mosaic? That has been so popular. So she has a really great eye for this kind of stuff. So once we come to the end the color is done. I'll show you in week number one how to get rid of that. And we have to look where that blue loop is or whatever color you've decided to use and we're gonna pull it back and turn it around and just pull up long enough so that you can slip stitch it into the first and then we're gonna do row number three. So row number three you already know what you're doing. Row number three is exactly what we see down here. So let's begin number three. Okay this is the final row of the journey today. So it's gonna chain three that's your first double and then you're gonna come into the space after uh, the two double crochets here. Okay and you're going to start collecting. So in this case it's gonna be a partial. So you got that space and then the space before the middle point. So pull through everything, chain one to lock it and then chain two to move on. And then you're going to single crochet in the two middle double crochets that are on top of the flower below. Now starting in the space after those single crochets and start doing and you got a full under flower here so there's gonna be four spaces to collect through. Okay and now you're gonna pull through everything. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a, a wiggle <laughs> to get that to go through. So you gotta get that through chain two to move on and single crochet there. Now if you're feeling like like you're never gonna get through this in the sample honestly it gets easier. Originally when I started this I was like really a lot of fear and then once I just kept you know just being patient turn on the television and just kind of relax put on a good movie um, you can find that it will go pretty good. So the last one is just a partial and then you're just gonna reach over to the very last stitch and double crochet. And this is where the journey is gonna end and this is where we're gonna pull out our tape measure and we're gonna take a look and the only difference between this sample and the big one is that the big one will be wider and uh, you'll see it's really quite lovely and it's heavy because it's using those nice beautiful puff stitches. Let's take a tape measure and let's take a measurement. So going back down to the pattern it said 14 double crochets in seven rows equals four inches. So we're gonna take a look at this. You notice that we did more than seven rows which is perfect because we need to do that. So we're gonna have to take our tape measure and measure across and see if we can get 14 double crochets before uh, in a four inch space. So what you can do is just use this orange section and you can count the amount of double crochets that are in between that spot. So remember they're in groups of two. So you can go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Ta da! I told you. Mm -hmm. So this is the same size hook that I used a single crochet with. So if I would have used a six millimeter because of my tension this would have been smaller than that and I'd have to redo it. So and remember the single crochet row is so much easier to do the, the swatching with that when it came to this you're probably gonna be bang on the first time. Let's turn our work and do this other side. So it says seven rows equals four inches. So let's take a look at how many rows we were actually able to do. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Mm -hmm. Don't forget those single crochet rows right in between. So that's kind of awesome right? Are you happy? Are you happy? Is that good? That's good. I'm really quite happy with that. <laughs> it actually worked out. Um, 
the gauging is so important for this particular one. I cannot emphasize this enough. You're going to see um, how this will puzzle together and I honest to God when this thing laid out I was so amazed on how well it puzzled. You have no idea. I was just so delighted and so I found myself as the project was working through this whole thing that I was more and more excited because each step the project started puzzling better and better and better together and uh, it honestly sat flat the first time which I was just so <laughs> so stunned by but honestly the whole lesson that we have with gauging this time on behalf of Aaron is such a great resource in order for us to check these gauges and we'll be able to make sense. So I'm gonna see you next time in week number one. We are going to be starting with the, the hook sizes that we've determined now with your gauging and so the rest of the tutorials we're not gonna do a gauge check before it because we've just done all our gauge checking here. Remember on the last part of this pattern there is the actual square. We are going to cover that in week number two but you can test yourself and it says approximately this is what you're going to pin. So it's gonna be slightly smaller than seven and a quarter. So what you're gonna do is once you block it you're gonna pin it and just pin it to that dimension and then you're gonna block it and that's all gonna be fun and easy. And that's something that's gonna be awesome but you if you are gonna try this you're gonna notice that these corners are pretty rounded and you'll see that once they start puzzling together because they're rounded they're gonna have a nice um, solid join and that's a gr another great reason why this stitch long is amazing. So this is the Puffy Flower Fun Day Crochet Blanket by Aaron. I'll see you in week officially number one as we continue our journey. So hopefully this was a good video for you today to learn something new. We'll see you.